All righty, it's just about 20 hours all across this beautiful nation of ours. I'm coming to you live and direct from Guyana in South America. My name is Wendell Badry, and I'd like to thank you very much for joining me here this evening for another edition of Momentum. It certainly is a pleasure being here with you. And I do hope that you are having a good one wherever you are all across this beautiful nation of ours and the world over wherever you're catching this stream from at this point in time. Welcome to another edition of Momentum. My name is Wendell Badry, and I will be here with you for the next few minutes, keeping you company on this evening's program. And on today's program, we have got a lot to share with you. Um, joining me on the program is Dr. Asha Kasoon and Kian Jabour. I will be telling you a little bit more about them in just a short while. But before we get to doing so, let me take this opportunity to say thank you very much for joining another edition of Momentum. Wendell Badri here. And if this is the very first time that you are joining the program, let me inform you that Momentum is an acronym for Molding Men to Uplift Men. That's right, Molding Men to Uplift Men. And on this program, we seek to uplift the men in our society, one program and one subject at a time. So on this evening's program, we are looking at racism. Thus far, we've looked at subjects such as uh, fatherhood, money management, and we've also looked at alcoholism or alcohol abuse, if you so prefer. And uh, there are many more topics for us to look at as we continue with this program. Once again, welcome down. If you're now joining us, a pleasure having you here. And I do hope that you will stick around for the entirety of the program. All right, before we get into introducing our guest, let me take this opportunity to thank those persons who have made this program a possibility. And so I'd like to start by saying thank you to my loving wife, Debbie, who continue to support this program in every way possible. She is at times financier, administrative director, producer, scriptwriter, and the list continues. So many, many thanks to you, Debbie, for standing by me and helping to make this program a possibility. Couldn't have done it without you, and I look forward to your continuous support um, on Momentum. Is Development Institute and Ewart Samson continue to support Momentum? And so we ask you to support them in return. They offer CSEC classes in seven different subject areas for teenagers and adults. Check out their Facebook page at Ace Development Institute or call 691-8783 to register. That's 691-8783. Ace Development Institute, offering you CSEC classes in seven different subject areas. Momentum is also made possible by Blended Energy. So many, many thanks to Blended Energy Juice Company who continue to support Momentum. Blended Energy is a natural juice blend in a bottle. It's made from real fruits, has no chemical additives, and tastes absolutely great. Get your bottle of Blended Energy by contacting 608-2063. That's 608-2063. Blended Energy. It's a natural juice in a bottle. And we'd also like to thank Signature School Transportation Service. They collect your precious ones from home and take them directly to their respective learning institutions. We understand that this is something you would love to do yourself, but time, work, traffic, among other circumstances prevent you from doing so. You can absolutely trust uh, Signature School Transportation Service with your loved ones. They guarantee that they will get them to their destination safely and on time. Book your child seat today by calling 648-1000 or 624-9480. That's 648-1000 or 624-9480. Signature School Transportation Service. Taking care of your responsibility just like you would. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet our guests for this evening. So... Let us say, without further ado, uh, good evening to Kian Jabour and Dr. Asha Kassoon. Um, Dr. Kassoon and Kian, can you hear me? How are you this evening? Uh, okay, I don't think... Yes, there we are. I believe I we can, can hear, hear you now. now. Can we hear you? Kian, are you there? Yes, I can hear you. Can yes, Kian can hear me. 
Excellent. Right. Glad to be and here. Dr. Kasun, can you hear me? Hi, good night, everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Kasun. Yes, you can hear me. All right, so we're ready to begin this evening's program. And let me say th thank you very much to our guests for joining in. All right, so let me give you some introductions to our guests. We'll start by introducing Dr. Ashi Kasun. She has served as a director on the Ghana Women Board, the Ghana Water Incorporated Board, the Atlantic Hotel Incorporated Board. She served as chairman of the Ghana Hemp Association and as country director of Guy Energy Incorporated. She truly enjoys traveling and experiencing new cultures, hearing and rescuing animals in need, reading and painting. It is her dream to transform Ghana's political landscape and inspire more young women to take a stand for their country. Academically, she is a medical doctor who specializes in public health, and she is currently in charge of the Safaya Health Center, and she is the managing director of New Vision Labs Incorporated in Guyana. Uh, she's also an executive member of the New Movement Political Party, and she made history when her political party elected her as the first female candidate and uh, also as the youngest running candidate in the 2020 election. Dr. Kasun, once again, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let us meet Kian Jabour. Kian Jabour and an executive member of the a new and united Ghana party. He is a single father. To realizing that his vit his vision rather for a better Guyana aligned with the party with which he is involved. Kian, along with his based voting, ethnic division, and corruption at the 2020 elections. Kian, once again, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure being here. Did we lose him? Yeah, I think so. Oh, Asha, I guess, I guess you can we're host hosting tonight. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, my apologies. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I think we're getting some um, internet connectivity issues, but nonetheless, we will persevere. I hope that you will stick around with me and, um, you know, uh, Bear with me as much as possible, yeah? All right. So we've just uh, heard about uh, Dr. Kasun, and we've also just heard about Kian. Now, uh, Kian and Dr. On understand it was a uh, very pressed so um, you'll excuse our third guest um, from our discussion for this evening all right however having the two guests here with us this evening um, we will get into our discussion but before we do Kian and Dr. Kis doing what rapid fire now rapid fire is a game of words this is how it is played basically I see a word and you respond with the first thing that comes to your mind, whether it's a word, um, it's a phrase, it's uh, you know a thought, whatever it is, yeah? We just want to hear the first thing that comes to your mind. And you have three seconds with, within which you have to respond. If we do not hear a response within three seconds, well, then you will hear this sound. All right? <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> All right. So can we begin? Perhaps we should key on because I see that um, our connection is not very much in par this evening. So let's begin. Kian, are you ready? Yes. 
All right, great. Kian has indicated that he is ready. So Kian, I have a list of words here. I believe I have just about uh, six words, which I'll share with you. And as mentioned before, I just like to hear the first thought that comes to mind, whether it's a word, a statement, a phrase, whatever it, whatever it is, the first thing that comes to mind, all right? So here is your first word, Kian. Your first word is individual. Strength. Love is your next word. Necessary. All right, I see that we're getting some connection issues. Nonetheless, we are going to work around it and do our utmost to ensure that we get this evening's uh, stream. Have a wonderful discussion this evening, all right? So do bear with us and thank you very much for joining in on the program. So Kian, uh, Kian rather, we were at your list of words. Um, Maybe I ought to contact the telephone provider, the internet service provider, and ask them what's going on. Eh? But it's, it's, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's something that we could understand. Um, you know, the weather has been really, you know, um, overcast, especially at my end where I'm at. So I guess maybe that's why we're getting the connection issue. The weather is very overcast in my area. Yeah. All right. So, Kian, uh, maybe we should go again. Your first, was your first word was individual, and you, your response to that was strength. Let's move on to the next word. Your next word is love. Necessary. Ethnicity. Power. All right. Did you get that word, Kian? The next word is ethnicity? Yeah, I'm responding accordingly. I'm not sure. If, uh, Asher, are you hearing me? Yes, I am. Oh, uh, my response to ethnicity was power. It, it must be on my end. It must be on my end. Um, my apologies. My apologies. I'll try to get it sorted. We're working on it. Your response to ethnicity, Kian? My response to ethnicity was power. Power, great. Thank you very much. Let's move on to politics is the next word. Um, Ever-changing. Mind. Mind is the next word. Thought. <laughs> and unity. No, oh, I love. <laughs> I know that was one of the words, but... <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Kian. Thank you very much for those responses. Now we'll move on to Dr. Kasun. Uh, Dr. Kasun, are you ready for your list of words? Uh, is Dr. Kasun there? I'm not seeing her in the stream. Do we have her here? Hello? Okay. Yes. Yes. There you are. All right. Yes. We have you, Dr. Kasun. All right. So are you ready? Your first yes, word, I'm Dr. Ready. Kasun, is hit. All right. I didn't get that response. Could you could you go again, please? Opportunity for peace. Oh, all right. Let's move on. Society. Guyanese. Think. Think is the next word. Mindful. Independent is the next word. Politics. <laughs> and togetherness is the next word. Races. All right, I didn't get that one there. All right, um, thank you very much, Dr. Kasun. I think we should move on and get into our discussion, all right? So once again, thank you very much for joining, and it is a pleasure having you here with us.
let's get straight into our discussion for this evening. Um, I see someone asking where is our third guest. Well, please allow me um, to inform you if you're now joining that our third guest couldn't be here due to some pressing matters. Of course, we know that he is the Honorable Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly. And so there are many other matters on the table that might have, um, you know, drawn his attention. So we'll move on nonetheless with the two guests that we have here this evening, Dr. Ashi Kasun and Kian Jibour. Kian Jibour, an executive member of a new and united Guyana, while Dr. Ashi Kasun is an executive member of the New Movement Party. Tonight we're talking about racism. And perhaps a good place for us to start, um, guess, would be with a definition. So if you don't mind, I'll go around the table and ask, what is your definition of racism? Kian, perhaps we should begin with you. What is your definition of racism, Kian? I think my definition is, is what the real definition is, and that's discrimination due to the color of someone's skin. Mm. Discrimination due to the uh, color of someone's skin. All right. And what about you, Dr. Kisun? How would you define racism? What would you say it is? Well, apart from the dictionary definition, I think we can agree racism is based on a certain group of persons being at a disadvantage due to their ethnicity. All right, all right. So being at a disadvantage due to their ethnicity. Um, so that's how our guests would define racism. Now, the Merriam-Webster English Dictionary, if I could share um, that definition with you, um, just allow me very quickly to pull it up here. I'm trying to get it for you. But however, the Merriam-Webster English Dictionary, it defines racism as prejudice, it defines it as a disadvantage, as you've heard our guests um, saying, right? It's where you uh, prejudice someone based on the color of their skin, their ethnicity, their belief system, and these sort of things, all right? Um, I'm trying to get the exact definition here, so just give me a moment. Thank you very much for your time. While we await the definition uh, from the Merriam-Webster English Dictionary, I'll ask our guests to ponder on our next question, and that is, research has shown that racism might have had its genesis in this country during the colonial era, that is, while we were under British rule, all right? So why then has it continued to this day, even though this country was free from colonial rule some 50 years ago or more? So maybe that's a question um, our guests can ponder on or share with you the definition of racism according to the online dictionary. It says that racism is prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism by an individual, community, or institution against a person or people on the basis of their membership of a particular racial or ethnic group, typically one that is a minority or marginalized. So that's how the dictionary defines racism. It is prejudice, it is discrimination or antagonism by an individual community or institution against a person or a group of persons on the basis of their membership of a particular racial or ethnic group, you know? So if they are Amerindian, whatever it may be, you know, if they're uh, marginalized, if they're prejudiced based on that, and they'll, well, well, then we can classify that as racism. So that's how the dictionary defines it. And of course, you've heard from our guests what are their respective definitions of the term. Now, let's move on to that second question. Um, according to research, and first of all, maybe I should find out from our guests whether they agree. Do you think that racism has its genesis in the colonial era? Or, you know, did it start after, before? When did racism really start in our country? What are your thoughts? Um, maybe Dr. Kasun could share her thoughts with us this time around. I think she may have been cut off, yeah. All right, it seems, Dr. Kasun, can you hear me? It seems as though we lost Dr. Kasun. 
soon for a moment. But do you think, do you think that uh, racism has its genesis in the colonial era or was it maybe before or after? Um, I think, uh, I think that is a fair assumption to be made. Um, you know, when you look around internationally, uh, when it comes to colonialism, and you look at other countries that would have experienced it, uh, their fates are not uh, indifferent to our own. So, uh, you know, I can, I can agree. I can agree to a certain extent. And, and that racism, uh, you know, you can, you can look at has sprung not just to one group of people, but I think the common denominator there is that it, has, it is from one group of people. And I think that's what's interesting. All right, uh, getting some connection issues there. So I didn't get all of what Kian said. I got the most of it. And what he's saying is that he would agree that it might have stemmed from the colonial era. Kian, why do you think that, or, or do you think rather that it still exists within our society today? What, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think it still exists? I think it exists, but it has evolved. And um, I think uh, like most uh, issues, whether personal or, or socially, I think the first uh, step to resolving uh, this issue would be acceptance. For anyone, I think, to argue that it doesn't exist, I think uh, takes us two steps backwards. Ashe, it seems you and I are going to have this chat. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> Which we have before, funny enough, <laughs> many times. <laughs> you know, funny enough, um, I think Ghana was taken over by the British in 1831. And then slavery was abolished in 1834, if I'm not mistaken. So all the way from back then, from the time you have a people that were disenfranchised by slavery, and then there's indentured laborers who came on board after. We need to remember that these are old hearts and pains that have not been cured as yet. So from all the way back then to now, you will have those feelings still existing. But I truly agree with you that it has evolved. Now we have a multiracial society in Guyana, six races and a lot of mixtures, if I may add. And there are still old pains and hurts that are being taken advantage of. The real question comes, is there racism in Guyana? Is it that we have racism per se or racial disparity triggered by politics? That's what I want you to think about. Well, um, I guess that's we the, lost it. <laughs> yeah, I, I I fully agree with you, Asha. That's that's something that um, that I think uh, needs to be addressed. Um, you know the way that disparity has come about, and what I think is actually very interesting is I I personally look at it from two aspects, and I know you know you can sit down and say, well, I am mixed with, you know, maybe the uh, the race that you know, would not have been enslaved. And, and for me to sit here and try to explain or get into that side of it, I think would be wrong on my part. But what I can say through observation, what I find very interesting, and this is coming from an outsider, um, is there is the emotional side that needs to be addressed of what happened um, during the times of slavery. But another aspect of that too, is the economic uh, repercussions of that. So not only can we discuss, um, again, what, uh, you know, the conversation of, well, this is a group of people that not, and let's be real, not that long ago, uh, just a few generations past, have experienced the worst situation humanity has ever experienced. And then we have to look at something a little bit more tangible, which is the fact that if you look at economic disparity, like one of the words that you used just now, you really see 
you know, as time evolved and went on, you saw who were able to maybe, I, I don't want to use the word bounce back, but um, were able to take advantage of the economic situation that was left as Guyana got its independence and things started to progress. Well, progress is a contentious word, but, you know, to where we are now, right? Um, when you look at the, la you know, I, you know, it's very funny because a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of the statistics are are purposely, you know, kind of hidden away um, in order to not really show the facts of the matter, which are, if you look at the land ownership in this country, as which race, for example, owns the most land in this country, which has majority of, of the economic resources being utilized to their benefit, things like that. Um, you really need to take the time to understand that these are still repercussions of the past. And unless um, equity comes into play, you're, you're really just left, um, you know, with, with, with one foot out of the door in the context of certain groups of people are not given the opportunities that others are. All right. Uh, my sincere apologies. Uh, we, we are getting some, you know, technical difficulties with our connectivity. However, we are doing our utmost to ensure that we can get a stable stream um, so that we can get this very important discussion going and moving forward. All right. Uh, so thank you very much for your patience and understanding in that regard. Kian, Dr. Kasun, thank you so much for holding the to how um, you know we may want them to so thank you very much for holding it down all right um, I, I hear I, I was able to hear a bit of the conversation where you have ventured into and so maybe this would be a good time for me to ask about the impacts that 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 racism might have on three main institutions in society and those are um, government and the other types of institutions, such as the religious institutions, social institutions, and so on, and the family. So how does racism impact these three pillars of society, if we may call them that? Let's begin with, um, let's begin with the family. Perhaps that's a good place to start. Dr. Kasun, how does racism necessarily affect the family? You see, now, if we're going to speak about the family and racism itself, we need to have an understanding of what kind of racism you're referring to. First of all, is there any person here who could come forward and tell me that they experience racism when it's not election time? We have our neighbors, our family, we grow up. Everyone eats together. We celebrate holidays together. We're a family. Family in the sense not I'm born from my mother and father, but a Guyanese family. We're one people, one nation, one destiny. It's said. Unity and diversity, my advisor likes to, to say. In my family and many Guyanese family, we don't see color. This is Uncle Eric. That's Auntie Sati. Everybody gets together, we eat, we're happy. We bring our children up with that understanding. Now, we spoke about where slavery came from into the institution going forward. Racism has changed its face over the many years, and I think that's something we can all agree on. When it comes to play into governments now, we need to speak out the inequality and disparity among the people and what they're facing. Do they have equal opportunities for education? Do they have equal opportunity for jobs? Do they have equal opportunity for economical benefits? All right, those are things we need to consider. Let us look to 2015 to 2020, when APNU was quote unquote in government, okay? We expected to see a lot of prospering taking place, economic growth, but one of the main complaints I got is that even the persons who were main supporters of that political party, which traditionally has been an afro guyanese based were not able to benefit at all. 
Now, when new government has gone in, there's still many cries from the opposition that they believe appetite is coming back to Guyana. There are few persons who do experience racism on a day-to-day basis, but that's more from persons who were brought up in families where they were not taught to respect each other and see each person as an individual and an equal and not with a racist background. But to be honest with this generation that is going forward, I don't see much racist, but there are racist practices that are still brought forward by elder persons of the other generations that are now passing on. All right, all right. I hear that, I hear that. So you don't believe that this generation is um, that much that much all right we'll come to maybe um we'll come to maybe a a little bit more about that and how we can you know um maybe remedy that situation a little bit later in the program but let's move across to kian to find out from him how he thinks that racism could impact government we've just heard from dr kasoon with her perspective uh, on the family and she went a little bit further um, let's hear from Kian now with regard to his first, um, his his comments with regard to the effects of racism on government. Um, yeah, what's interesting is is you're making the statement of racism and its effects on the government, and I'm of the opinion that the racism is derived from the government. So, to be very honest with you, as Asha just said. Um, you know, when it comes to the average guy and his family, and I mean, you know, Asha, like myself, I know we've had the wonderful opportunity to travel this country to the, from its highest points to its lowest. Um, and what you do realize as, as a common trait to Guyanese is that we're not inherently racist. We, we're not a people that look at each other when we go in the marketplace or when we jump in the bus as, uh, you know, oh, I have another, uh, a person of another skin color next to me. And, you know, I'm comfortable. As a matter of fact, as we can all, I think, agree on, um, being average Guyanese, that the only time that really comes up or that really becomes an issue, uh, racism, that is, is during elections time. It's when the politicians decide that, you know what, this is our tool um, for division and conquer and um, division and control. And, we're going to take advantage of it. And I think, you know, it's something that we've watched both um, major parties being APNU, AFC, well, APNU and, um, and PVP utilized to their advantage. Um, uh, why I say that is, you know, I'm, I'm somebody that tries to look at the numbers as much as I can. And when I sit down and I analyze, you know, for example, the boards, the the various boards of directors for all the institutions that the government puts in place once they're in power, you really get a sense of what side that organization is leaning to or that party is leaning to. And to be very frank, you know, when the PPP goes in, you see a lot more Indian directors on these different various boards. And, um, and then when APNU went in, you saw the exact same thing with afro Guyanese. So you know that that aspect of being a um, completely welcoming and multiracial organization, you realize very quickly that the political organizations are the ones that create that distrust, right? And I think that is where um, you, you, you end up uh, getting the narrative confused when it comes to um, when it comes to what these organizations are putting out because a lot of them, well, both of them very often will say, well, look at these token people we have in these places. Doesn't that mean we're equal? And um, what they're not saying is, well, majority of our people in the PVP are Indo and majority are Afro. But don't worry, we have a few others. That makes us, you know, uh, welcoming. So 
I think we need to stop listening to what the politicians are, are you know, giving their opinions on or, or at least giving the narrative, their narrative on and take a little deeper look and see what the numbers are showing. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I hear you on that point, Kian. And um, you mentioned that when the PPP is in power, uh, it is the, the state boards and so on are dominated by Indo-Guyanese versus when the Afnu AFC were in power, the, the, the boards were dominated by Afro-Guyanese, right? right. Um, but, uh, I mean, does that smack of racism or is it, like you said, what's available? Because um, you being an executive member of a political party would know that, you know, um, you have certain things to honor. I don't want to get too much in details with that, but you have certain things to honor. So is it a matter of being racist because it is dominated by either majority Indo or majority afro Guyanese? Well, it, I think it goes back to equal opportunity, right? And what you find is that if you have one group of people put into positions of power um, of one ethnicity, then obviously that will end up um, creating a, a disparity. So why I say equal opportunity is because I'm going to be very, very frank here. And I, I think it's at some point you got to start speaking things for what they are. The truth is, when I view it, is that I prefer a system based on merit. And what I can tell you is that if I were to look at all of the professionals um, and qualified people that are part of the APNU AFC, and then I were to look at all of the qualified people that are part of the PPP, what I find very interesting is that if any of those two organizations were truly you know, welcoming to ensuring that, you know, there's their multi-ethnic and that they were welcome and opening to all people, then the truth is so many of each of those organizations should be the ones that are on the boards or in ministerial positions that are much higher qualified than the current ones in place and the previous. So clearly what we're seeing is not a not a group of people chosen on merit and qualification, but more so a group of people chosen on what can only be, be looked at as, as party loyalty and ethnicity. So you really end up back to questioning, uh, questioning how exactly uh, these organizations are then removing themselves from being looked at as 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 um as biased organizations towards one ethnicity all right thank you very much for that kian uh in just a short while we'll hear from dr ashik is soon is a person born racist and can someone be racist and not even realize that they are but first let us hear from our sponsors ACE Development Institute is offering free math and English CSEC classes for students and adults pursuing CSEC certification. They are currently offering tutorship in seven different subject areas at the CSEC level. Contact ACE Development Institute on telephone number 691-8783 to get enrolled today. That's 691-8783. Contact them today to find out how you can get enrolled for your uh, next CSEC sitting, 691-8783, Ace Development Institute. At Durbage Estates, you can get coconut oil, dried coconut, and coconut water in wholesale quantity. Contact them on 661-2716. That's 661-2716. For coconut oil, dried coconut, and coconut water in wholesale quantity, Durbage Estates, 661-2716. Blended Energy offers you wholesome nature in a bottle, different flavors and different sizes. Blended Energy is the tastiest fruit juice you'll ever taste in your life. You've got to try the soursop, golden apple, tamarind, guava, cherry, and pine. Or go for the mixture and enjoy the blend of all the flavors you love so much. 
Contact 608-2063. That's 608-2063 to order your bottle of freshly made natural fruit juice. Blended energy fruit juice. 608-2063. Place your order today. At Signature School Transportation Service, they collect your precious ones from home and take them directly to their respective learning institutions. They understand that this is something you would love to do yourself, but time, work, traffic, among other circumstances, prevent you from doing so. You can absolutely trust them with your loved ones. They guarantee that they will take them to their destination safely and on time. Book your Chelsea today by calling 648-1000 or 624-9480. That's 648-1000 or 624-9480. Signature Transportation Service, taking care of your responsibility just like you would. Thank you for staying tuned to Momentum. Tonight, we are talking about racism and joining us on the program, executive member of a new and united Ghana, Ian Jabour, who is also a businessman, as well as Dr. Ashi Kassoun, a medical doctor and executive member of the New Movement Party. Now, before the break, uh, Kian and I were talking about, um, you know, the effects that racism may have in government. And he was saying, um, you know, that from based on what happens in Guyana, um, when one political party is in place, we see uh, the state boards and uh, state entities being dominated by one ethnicity, whereas when another or the other political, major political party that is takes over, um, it is the opposite in terms of the domination in ethnicity. And we were supposed to come over to Dr. Kish, uh, Dr. Kassoon to find out from her whether a person born racist and not only if they're born racist, but whether they can be racist and not even realize it. So, Dr. Kassoon, what do you think? Is a person born racist? Absolutely not. Studies have proven that nobody is born racist. There were several um, experiments and studies carried out with children to find out if somebody can be, can I say, if it's in their genes to be racist. And it was proven that this is attitude and behavior that is learned. It has to be taught to them. So nobody's born racist. And yes, you cannot be racist and not know <laughs> that you are. There are simple things. Um, this context and how this is happening. Go back in the days when an Indian woman, I mean our grandparents and their parents, when Afro Guyanese and Indian Guyanese got together. This is something that was experienced in my family when my mom got married to Afro Guyanese. Her family disowned her. Guyanese context. How many people? Probably some listening to this show right now have gone through that by the partners that they choose face racism directly. How many persons have been in school and because of their curly hair, their teacher tells them to cut it or leave? It's a form of racism. It's who they are, it's their culture. How many persons have tried to apply for a job and they're still, they don't look like the description for marketing executive that is wanted at the moment? That's another form of racism that exists. Um, right now, in my opinion, how racism is stuck in Paramount in Guyana is in the inequality of opportunities that are presented to the people. Students are trying to go forward, especially the younger generation. They don't think about these things. They try to get away from the traditional prejudices that the parents have been discussing, trying to move away from the old ways of thinking. But what is happening is that you're getting discrimination in the work settings in the sense that groups of persons are trying to move forward without other groups of persons, politically like Kian message, uh, Kian mentioned earlier. What's happening is that people are seeing these things happening. Look at what example it is. Um, it was for us if we had a discussion about the incident in Mokka, a predominantly Afro-Guyanese village. 
and right that they're squatting and they should be there. But the perception that is given to the public is that here in the Indian government is quiet after Gandhi's homes. One of the next day, land and homes are given to Indo Guyanese. I mean, I understand they have work to do, they cannot be held back by a few. But in the country, there's so much state racism. They need to be more careful how they act. And I think it agrees with me. Um, at least that's how I see it. All right. You, you said earlier, Dr. Kisun, that a person is not racist, they're, they're not born racist, rather. And it is something that is learned. It's something that is taught to, especially children or, or, or youngsters, you know, and they grow into it. So then, if they're taught, if it, if it is something that they learn and they're not born with it, is it something that they can unlearn? Is it something that they can, you know, um, get rid of? Is it something that they can shut away from, or is it something that they're stuck with? Is that? a thought pattern or a cycle that will, will continue um, throughout the world. Definitely. And it's something that actively needs to be spoken about. Because we can tell you that somebody in a leadership position, sometimes you feel you can just ignore this because by speaking about it, I'm giving power to it. And we can give you a comeback strike to dress this face on and let's just get to the bottom of it. Both persons like myself, we decide let's just keep going on. And do the things. The more focus groups there are to speak about it in schools, the more we speak about it in community groups, the more we will be able to abolish this. It still exists everywhere, you notice that. But active efforts need to be continuously enforced in order to get rid of this. And we cannot depend on governments only or politicians only. And we need to do these religious groups. Yes, the political party, which is mine, like Ian's, is actively speak out against this. It's something that needs more focus, more work. Mm. Um, but, but do you believe that talking alone will solve the problem? Do you believe that talking alone could help us on this issue? So we have to start somewhere. Can you guys hear me? I can. I didn't get you, dear. Could you just repeat for the sake of me? I'm pretty sure the guests might have heard the audience and Kian, but I did not. Please, thank you. Okay, you're asking me if just talking about it is enough. So we have to start somewhere. Yes. Once we start talking about it, then we take action. But we have to start somewhere. And we start by talking. Like Education we're doing right is now. Key. Education is key. All right, all right. Thank you very much for that, uh, Dr. Kisu. Let's come over to Kian, who has been quiet for some quite some time. Kian, how should I react to someone who is openly racist towards me or even others, um, you know, who are around me, whether, whether I know these pe people around me or not, how should I react to someone who is racist, whether towards me or to the people around me? Um, that's a tricky question because I, I think it has a lot to do with the particular circumstances of each situation. So, I don't think that there is any one kind of surefire way of dealing with a racist. Um, but obviously, um, like most contentious situations, I think the idea would be to remain calm and um, let your words uh, kind of guide the conversation. Always make sure that, uh, you know, that education is, is, remember, sorry, always make sure you remember that education is your most powerful tool. And I think, um, uh, you know, depending on your age and the person you're speaking to and circumstances you're in, you know, sometimes my answer could be remove yourself. I mean, just kind of exit. 
Um, other times it could be, you know, maybe just have a chat, get to the root of the conversation, see where this person's emotional uh, response is coming from. Because um, I say emotional response because I'm how I view racism is is um, is fear of the unknown. All right, and that comes from a lack of education. So what you often find is racist people um, actually express their what appears to be anger and hatred, but is actually derived from fear. So they don't know what this other person is about. They don't know or understand anything about them. Um, and because of that, they tend to react in different ways. So you got to remember that racism isn't shown always by an outburst of, of racial slurs or anger or hatred. You know, people might, you know, act racially towards other people by not, um, you know, not confronting them or not speaking to them, not acknowledging them. Um, other people may do things, you know, kind of underhandedly, but not kind of face to face. But you got to remember that you're dealing with different scenarios. And what I think as the victim of racism, uh, the victim of racism needs to understand is that you really have to remember that it very often comes from a position of fear. And people just react differently to that. So you have to kind of adapt that situation. In the beginning, when you answered the question, Kian, you said it is important that you remain calm and yeah. um, let education be your guide. But I mean, and, and you also said that racism is not very outwardly um, reactive or so, right? It can be very subtle and so on. But let's look at the point of view, the hypothetical situation where someone is being very aggressive, um, you know, uh, physically, well, maybe not physically, but verbally aggressive towards another and are screaming racial slurs, you know, towards them, then how does that person remain calm in a situation like that? Because you have here someone who is screaming, perhaps at the top of their voice, racial slurs. And of course, that may in um, that that may incense anyone. So, how do you remain calm in such a situation? You know, for me to tell somebody how to remain calm is is more of a self control that I hope that they have. Um, you have to remember that, depending on the circumstance, you may need to take the higher road, being removing yourself from that situation. Uh, you know, if you find somebody getting overly aggressive towards you, whether it be racism or, or, or anything else for that matter, you really should calmly remove yourself from the situation because um, at that point, you never know what an erratically emotional person will do. So that, that would probably be my, my, my best advice. If you try to, you know, negotiate or go after them or, or you know, retaliate in some way, it could lead to things escalating so depending on the circumstances if somebody's screaming at the top of their lungs not listening to a word you're saying anyway it probably might be best to remove yourself ignoring that that might be the better option ignoring right but you know you don't want to do it that's what you're saying yeah. to kind of, you know cause the situation to escalate you kind of we have to know how to okay you know what I understand your opinion and just kind of slowly shift up. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I understand what you're saying there. But here's what, Kian. Realistically speaking, and I'm sorry I'm coming at you like this, but I guess maybe that's what was right. We're living in the 21st century. And a country where the culture is mostly dance hall dominated, all right? A lot of our young people and even, um, you know, young adults are listening to the dance. I don't know. I'm actually very curious about this question. Um, there is... <laughs> 
I'm sorry, but I, I was saying that there is this um, notion, you know, that 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 um, you can disrespect me, and 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 if you disrespect me, well then I gotta fix you, or I gotta. Well, I'm putting it in quote unquote, right? They 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 their own. I I I have to um you know react in in a violent way or or some way that 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 shows my authority and my position on this particular issue so how then do do you do you really the same answer to those or with your um response for to, to suit those persons no you see i think you're drifting into a different realm here because when it comes to what you're referring to in social culture now um especially for the younger generation of having to represent themselves the truth is i think what you're finding there is actually a lack of self-confidence. When somebody has that urge to prove themselves, it's because they are lacking something to themselves. Right? They're worried about something that, that they are unsure about. And, um, well, Asher, I guess we'll continue. Um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. Well, if, you know, if your opinion differs, but I, how I look at that is, whether it be racism, whether it be other forms of disrespect or, you know, uh, just an average conversation, I think, uh, I think what's important is that whoever you are dealing with or whoever you're engaged with, you have to understand where their opinions are coming from. And when you find somebody lashing out towards you with regards to racism or well, I guess it's racism we're speaking about, so, but there's other things, um, other forms of different disrespect. I think you have to realize that if somebody has that urge that they have to get their opinion across to let you know how they feel, it's more than likely because they are worried about some aspect of themselves. And I think you need to know as an individual reacting to those people that that that's kind of what you have to face front on. Is you can't just always listen to the words, but more so why they're saying what they're saying. Yeah, Kian, I actually don't really agree with the concept that um, most of the youth are dance hall oriented and that's their reaction in reality. There's just a select few persons that have those reactions and are dance hall oriented. In fact, I am actually proud of the way the youth are being brought up now because more parents are conscious of what's going on and trying to bring up their children in the correct ways. One thing I've learned over the years is that when a person reacts and the way they see the world, it's normally based from their inside, what is going on within them. So if you have somebody come up to you that's openly racist and openly hostile, first of all, you don't take it personally. You understand this person probably experienced something that was deeply traumatic, deeply hurting. You step away from the situation if it's getting violent. If it's somebody you can have a discussion with, you reason with them, tell them your opinion. You need to remember that we're part of a diverse society. Many cultures, many practices, many differences. But that's what makes us Guyanese. Our differences need to be appreciated. And when we can learn to appreciate the differences in each culture, each ethnicity, and all of the peoples, then we can be able to move forward as one. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kasun. Thank you very much, Kian, for your contributions there. Of course, um, I have more, you know, questions, more proging questions to come your way, but I see that we're almost out of time. And so I'll just have to maybe, um, you know, put those questions in my notebook and come back with them on our next program. That is our next edition, um, you know, of, of, of the discussion on racism, all right? Because next week we wouldn't be discussing racism, we'll be discussing another topic. Next week we'll be talking about climate change and agriculture. And if you're now joining us, this is Momentum, a pro program for men. 
It is an acronym for Molding Men to Uplift Men. And what we're doing is seeking to, uh, you know, educate our menfolk um, uh, on, on, on a number of social issues in society, one subject and one program at a time. His Development Institute is pleased to be associated with Momentum, and they're offering um, seven different subjects at the CSEC level. You can enroll by calling 691-8783. That's 691-8783. Contact East Development Institute to get enrolled for CSEC classes, 691-8783. If you're looking for dried coconut and coconut water in wholesale quantity, Durbeach Estate is the place to call, 661-2716. That's 661-2716. For dried coconut, coconut water, and coconut oil in wholesale quantity, Durbeach Estates, 661-2716. Blended Energy offers you wholesome nature in a bottle. Different flavors and different sizes. Blended energy is the tastiest fruit juice you'll ever taste in your life. You've got to try the soursop, golden apple, tamarind, guava, cherry, and pine. Or go for the mixture and enjoy the blend of all the flavors you love so much. Contact 6082063 to order your bottle of freshly made fruits. Blended energy fruit juice. That's 6082063 to place your order. And Signature School Transportation Service, they collect your loved ones from home and take them to their respective destinations safely and on time. 648-1000 or 624-9480 are the numbers to call to book a seat for your child. 648-1000 or 624-9480. Signature School Transportation Service, Please to be associated with Momentum. Thank you for staying tuned. As we get ready to bring the curtain down on this evening's program, Kian and Dr. Kasoon, our final two questions. I'll ask um, Dr. Kasoon to help us answer uh, this question, how we can rid ourselves of racist thoughts and practices. That is how we can rid ourselves of racist thoughts and practices. And after she, um, uh, you know, completes that question, we'll ask Kian, to help us answer how the members or followers of a group or institution or entity should react to its leader practicing racism. So how should the members of a group, an entity or an organization react to its leaders practicing racism? Dr. Kasun, I'll call on you first to share with us how we can rid ourselves of racist thoughts and practices. I think I've been saying this a lot tonight. We need to start appreciating the differences in our cultures, in the different ethnicities and peoples. When we learn to appreciate that each individual comes from a different background, has a different culture, then we learn to appreciate that we can also love them and go forward as one people without segregation or discrimination. Stop looking at color. Start appreciating people for who they are. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Kasun. Kian, how should the members or followers of a group or to its leader practicing racism? Um, you know, I think what um, we miss most in society is sometimes looking at things from all sides and what we miss a lot is that every action has a reaction so the minute that you find your leader acting in a racial manner or or promoting racism in any way what you're going to end up with is with a group of people that will react in a very similar manner so just as you feel that uh, your leader is representing you you will end up being the victim of something quite similar. So the idea of racism and having your organization or the party that you follow um, uh, speaking about it or, or kind of using it as a tool really can only be to your detriment. And what I think people need to remember is that politics especially is an ever-changing game. And um, if you find your leaders, like we do in Guyana, using politics uh, to you know uh, divide or control people then really and truly we need to start looking at um, at ourselves a little bit deeper if we're allowing them to do it yeah, yeah. 
All right. Thank you very much, Kian, for that. And of course, um, you know, it doesn't stop at political organizations. I know of other institutions. Um, you know, I, I don't want to. I don't want to go into specifics, but I do know of other institutions and organizations in society that, um, you know, you you have racism in its midst, in, in its midst rather, and um, you know that really isn't a good thing. I'll tell you what. Before I ask the guests to share with us their closing comments for this evening, as we get ready to wrap up this evening's program, um, there's a little story I'd like to share with you. It takes me back to. When I was a teenager, I was attending a private institution. Now, this private institution was one which sought to um, educate youths, underdeveloped youth, all right? So youths from, um, you know, underdeveloped communities. And this organization, it was for, let me, let me just to say it was pro one race, all right? It was pro one race. However, um, upon my entry into the institution, um, I was the only one who was of a different ethnicity, as a matter of fact, in its entirety. And, um, you know, in the beginning, everything was all right and so on. Several, let's, let's just say a long period after, um, one of the persons in the institution uh, and myself, we got into an argument and eventually it erupted into a racial argument uh, um, where, you know, some things were said to me and I also said back to something and it developed into a, a whole racial debacle. And, you know, um, I guess maybe if that person is listening now, I don't want to call any names or so. But it affected me for a very long time. I'll tell you that much. It's a very, it, it, it affected me for a very long time. Because that would, that would have been, rather that, that would not have been, but, but that perhaps was the very first time that I would have experienced um, discrimination to that level in such a fashion, you know? Um, it might have happened in the past, but never to that level. And for me, the way I reacted was totally wrong. I, I, I basically fought fire with fire. And, you know, in retrospect, I believe that it was not the way to go. I believe the suggestion that Dr. Kassoon and the suggestion that Kian proffered earlier, that is to be the bigger person and allow your education to take control. That is to understand that we are different people. We are a diverse group of people living in one space. And so what we ought to learn, especially now more than ever, is how to coexist in this space that we have. If we do not allow ourselves to coexist, and even more so harmoniously, I believe we are setting ourselves up for doom. It is important that we see each other as one people, one nation, one destiny. And that is something that we ought to define as well in my own belief, my own perspective, you know? It's something that we really need to define. What do we really mean by one people, one nation, one destiny? It is something that we ought to give more thought into, perhaps. All right. Having said all that, please allow me to go around the table and field closing remarks from our guests, and then we'll bring the curtain down on this evening's program. Dr. Kasun, let's take your closing remarks. First of all, thank you for having me tonight. This is actually a topic I'm really passionate about. I would like to leave our viewers with a message. Um, I mean, it sounds like a broken record, but you need to be the change that you want to see. If you want for racism to die or end, you need to stop it. If you find yourself having racist thoughts or you're thrown into racist situations, use education, be the bigger person, walk away from it, or correct it. There is no space in our lives or as Guyanese going forward for racism to take dominance. 
And remember, as the people of Guyana, you have the ability and power in your hand to vote on and raise leaders and politicians. Any person, a group or organization who is leading racist thoughts or behaviors, the power is in your hand. Don't accept racism. Don't inflict it. And if it's happening, who we'll have the power to change it? Thank you very much, Dr. Kisu. Kian, let's come over to you to hear your closing comments, your closing remarks. Um, I think probably my my one piece of advice that I would give to all Guyanese out there is just because somebody or a group of people around you is racist doesn't mean you have to react in a racist manner. All right? And I think that is what we see happening in Guyana more than anything, which is people reacting to situations. Uh, I think you need to remember that, you know, you have to be the, you have to be the person within a scenario that can take a step back, look at how you are choosing to react and always do your introspection before you outwardly react or, or respond to anything um, like racism. All right, and you know, often I, I, I say, you may think that you are fighting racism by showing, giving them a taste of their own medicine, if you will, but what you're really doing is perpetuating a situation that will not end. So you, you want it to stop, you have to be the one that stops. Thank you very much, Kian. If I could add to the closing remarks of our guests. Um, at my workplace, there is a colleague of mine by the name of Marlon. Um, Marlon would usually say, listen, every time you ask Marlon, how you doing, Marlon? I all right, buddy. I good. You know, I always happy. That's his reaction all the time. I kid you not. Every single time. So one day I'm asking Marlon, Marlon, how come is it you always happy, buddy? How come is it you... You always good. You nothing don't bother you, nothing don't affect you. Marlon's response to me is me. I control my mind. I make the choices that I believe are best for me. And so being sad, being frustrated, being worried, it does not benefit me. It only stresses me out. I choose to be happy, I choose to be good, and I choose peace. And that is how I live my life. That was Marlon's response to me. Yeah? If I could echoes, um, sorry, echo Marlon's sentiments, I, I, I would do so. And I would want to encourage you to do the same thing. To make the choice. To be patient. To be kind. To be loving. To be peaceful. To be respectful. And to all in all, be your brother's keeper, be your brother's, uh, your sister's keeper, and to ensure we live harmoniously, to ensure that we live in unity in this country that we call home. With that being said, thank you very much for your time. It was an absolute pleasure being here with you. My name is Wendell Badry, and I do look forward to joining you on our next edition of Momentum. That is next Wednesday at 8 p.m., where we will be talking about climate change and agriculture. Kian, Dr. Kasun, thank you very much for your time. A pleasure. Have a great rest of the week ahead. Take care. And thank you for making Momentum possible. We couldn't have done it without you. Uh, so we do look forward to you joining us next week uh, uh, at 8 p.m. That's next Wednesday at 8 p.m. So the 18th of January at 8 p.m. right here on my Facebook page. Wendell Badry, please spread the word, share the message, let everyone know that momentum is on the air. And we're seeking to uplift men, one program, one subject at a time, molding men to uplift men. Thank you for joining us. Have a great rest of the evening. Take care. Bye-bye.